this particular mall is changing the way people worship, the way people think about worship. People immediately assume that because a mall is not a parking lot full of cars, people coming in and out, and neon signs and stores up and down, that it's not just defunct or dead. When a tree you know, dies, it becomes habitat for all these other things. And we look at the tree from the outside and we're like, well, oh, poor dead tree. But on the inside, the raccoons are going, yay, a nice place to live. And from a, um, a design perspective, if we begin to kind of think about a mall structure as being the shell of an ecosystem that is in transition, you know, there are certainly lessons we can learn using ecological principles about the ways that we can reclaim uh, and carve up those spaces so that they would be supportive of new kinds of life, if you will. The way that community groups have been able to find opportunities for socialization, for, um, you know, for uh, religious services and other things, I think it's really cool. The piece resulted in a, in a film, several different videos, drawings, photographs, and a, a wall was constructed to convert one of the spaces in the mall to become a place of public assembly for future use. It was a way to give back to the community, which inspired me to do the project and document the changes at the Euclid Square Mall and hopefully start a dialogue that will continue to change and grow. Once an object, a place, a person, or a thing no longer has purpose or function to the individual, the individual immediately turns it into being obsolete or, or useless to them. But I think it's sort of a human trait to be, uh, you know, kind of entertained and engaged by things you haven't seen before. So even though a lot of the malls that have been um, vacated, abandoned, are not that old, you know? They're not hundreds of years old, not even 50 in most cases. Um, I think it's because like the retail model evolves more rapidly than other types of land uses because it's what gets us to buy things. You know, that the way that we reclaim underutilized spaces is to just make them accessible and let people figure it out. People are smarter than sometimes design practitioners and public officials give them credit for. And if you make the space accessible and um, you show people, it's transparent, like here's how you use the space. You know, if you want permission, you know what you need to do and, and people will figure it out. I've found that the compulsion to worship and practice faith in whatever environment is provided is an inspiration. To me as a creative person, the concept that productivity is not site-specific or material-specific, that um, if you're compelled or inspired to do something, if you pursue it with enough genuine passion, that the results will be, at the very least, personally successful and inspiring. I mean, we usually look at the built fabric first and work with the people. It's a nice thought to kind of think about the people first and figure out how that then impacts the, the built form. Mm -hmm.